All right, so this uh, section is on optimization. Um, and so this is just looking at more uh, practical applications that we can use uh, the derivative for. And a um, variety of different problems. So you can't really um, see a couple of types and, and just change the numbers kind of deal. We, uh, we, we kind of got to read the problem and really assess what is what is asking for. Um, and a lot of times, some of the times, the picture will help. Um, so like in this first one, um, we have a farmer with 2,400 feet of fencing, wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight river. Uh, he needs no fence along the river. What are the dimensions of the field that has the largest area? And so let's draw a picture. Picture helps. Um, so here is our river. And we will draw a rectangle there. And so basically, this is the fence. And that perimeter is going to be 2,400 feet. And then we need to figure out, um, is it going to look like that? Is it going to be something more like that, where that would be 2,400 feet of fence, or what exactly we're going to do? Um, obviously, the picture, as far as the shape goes, doesn't matter too much how wide we make that, or how tall, or whatever. Um, so let's just label, we're going to label these two sides. Obviously, they're the same length because we have a rectangle. Um, so we'll call those X. Uh, we'll call this side Y. And so with these optimization um, problems, you, you're you typically going to be working with two variables. And you're going to have two equations or two functions. And so one of the functions is going to be kind of a constraining uh, function or equation and then the other equation or function is going to be the one that we're trying to maximize or minimize as the case may be um, so the two functions that we're going to be working with in this one that we have the perimeter obviously with the 2400 feet of fencing that's dealing with perimeter and then we want to maximize the area so the perimeter is the one where you're, you're given a fixed number that you are constrained to and so in this case um this, the perimeter is set at 2,400 feet. So the perimeter of this would be x plus y plus x or 2x plus y. So let's say 2,400 equals 2x plus y. And that's our perimeter equation. And then we want to maximize the area. So the area of this fenced in area is going to be x times y. So the uh, here is our constraining equation. Here is the equation that we want to maximize. Um, so the next step is we're going to solve this equation for whichever of these variables is most convenient. Um, sometimes it, it, it never matters, but sometimes more, one is more convenient than the other. So let's just solve it for y. We get y equals 2400 minus 2x. And then we're going to plug this in to this equation. So we have the area is x times 2400 minus 2x and let's distribute the x so we have 2400x minus 2x squared all right and then of course anytime we need to maximize or minimize um, something in this class we're always going to be taking the derivative where did my mouse go okay there we go all right so let's take the derivative of the area and then we'll set it equal to zero and figure out what x is, and then we can figure out what y is. So a prime is just going to be 2400 minus 4x. Set it equal to zero. And solve for x, and we get x is 600. Um, now, what another consideration you have to think of is what are the max and min. So we're not in an infinite, um, we're not on all the whole real number line because obviously X has to be positive. Obviously X has some maximum value, like it cannot be infinite because the perimeter is only 2,400. So the minimum that X could be obviously is zero. And what's the maximum? Well, the maximum we're gonna, let's just set Y equals zero and then X 2400 equals 2x. So the maximum that x could be would be 1200. And let's see what the y values are. 
So if X is zero, and you can use this one as well. If X is zero, um, Y is gonna be 2,400. And when X is 600, Y would be 2,400 minus 1,200. So Y would be 1,200. And when X is 1,200, 2,400 minus two times 1,200, Y would be zero. And so which of these maximizes the area? Obviously it's gonna be this one because the other two will just have an area of zero. Um, so in this case, you, you're not really missing out if you don't check the boundaries of what what the interval could be, but um, sometimes it does it does make a difference. So you always wanna keep, keep that in mind. What can your, what are the constraints of what X and Y can be? All right, so there is that one. Um, let's look at the next one, number two. And so here we have a cylindrical can is to be made to hold one liter or a thousand cubic centimeters of oil. Uh, find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the metal. All right, so um, we have two equations again. We are now this time we're going to minimize the area or the surface area of the can. And the constraining part of this now is the volume. So what is the volume of a cylinder? Um, and you can think of this, um, you probably, you may have heard this at some point in school, but um, the, the volume of a cylinder, and we, we can kind of draw one, just kind of illustrate this perhaps. Um, so we have a cylinder here. Um, this part is obviously round. Uh, so the area, the area of that top is pi r squared. And then just kind of like with a with a cube, you you basically take the area of the, the bottom or the top and then multiply by the height. We're gonna do the same thing here. So the area of the top or the bottom, pi r squared times the height. So the volume of a cube is very sorry not a cube a uh, cylinder is pi r squared times h and so our volume is a thousand centimeters cubed so this will be a thousand equals pi r squared h right and then what's the other equation um the other is for the surface area now this one um you can also figure this out so um we'll just call this s and so the surface area, we have the top and the bottom of material, and then we have the, the tube part. And so what's the um, area of the top? We already said is pi r squared. We have two of these because we have two circles because we have the top and bottom. Um, so this would be two pi r squared. It takes care of the top and the bottom. And then uh, we have the, the middle part. And so if you think about the middle part, the way, the way I remember this is un unroll the cylinder. So you have a, and you can do this with a piece of paper, have a piece of paper rolled up in a cylinder, unroll it, and what would be the, now we have a rectangle. And what's the area of the rectangle? Well, we have the height, and the length of the rectangle would be the circumference of the circle. So the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and so it's 2 pi r times h. So this this is the area of the two part of the circle, which when you unroll it is a rectangle. One, one length is the height, the other length is the circumference of the circle, which is two pi r. All right, so there's our um, surface area. Now we're gonna do just like we did on the other one. This is our constraint, and this is what we wanna minimize. So uh, we need to solve this equation for for one of the variables, again, it doesn't matter which one, but obviously it's easier to solve this for H. So we get H equals 1000 divided by pi R squared. We're gonna substitute that in over here. So two pi R squared plus two pi R times 1000 over pi R squared. And then let's simplify this. So two pi R squared, plus uh, pi will cancel, r over r squared leaves r on the bottom, and then two times a thousand, so 2,000 over r. All right, now take the derivative, 
set it equal to zero, figure out what R is. Um, so S prime will be four pi R, and then 2000, you can write this as 2000 R to the negative one, use the power rule, bring the negative one down, subtract one from the exponent, we get minus 2000 over R squared. And then we're going to set that equal to zero and solve it for R. Another thing to pay attention to on these uh, types of problems is what, what exactly are they asking? Are they asking for the minimum area? Are they asking for the minimum volume, whichever the case may be, or are they asking for the dimensions? So in both of these, we happen to be asking for the dimensions, but it could say like in the, in the first one, what's the minimum um, area that it would be or the maximum area. Um, all right, so we'll bring the 2000 over R squared to the other side. Cross multiply. Divide by 4 pi. And of course, that is uh, 500 over pi. And then we'll just take cube root. So R is the cube root of 500 over pi. So now the dimensions of the cylinder are given by the radius and the height. So now um, we have the height, which was given right there. So H is. 1,000 over pi r squared. So this is 1,000 over pi times the cube root. It's going to be a little bit uh, tedious. Over pi, and then that is squared. And so now we need to simplify this. Um, so let's let's do this slowly here. So let's, we have the 500 on the bottom. So let's write 1,000 is 2 times 500. And let's kind of, let's break this down. So a cube root squared is the same as the exponent of 2 thirds. So this is really 500 over pi to the 2 thirds. So let's write the 500 to the 2 thirds. And let's do that again. 2 thirds and then pi, and so we have pi to the first power divided by pi to the two-thirds. So that's going to leave a pi to the one-third. Uh, 500 over 500 to the two-thirds is going to be 500 to the one-third. Pi to the one-third on bottom. That's a three. And then we can just put those one third, of course, is the same as a cube root. So two times the cube root of 500 over pi. So there is our height and there is our radius. All right, and then the fun part is finding a tool that measures the cube root of 500 over pi so you can get the cylinder perfectly. All right, so that's it for this section.